The 2024 Xbox Game Showcase happened four days ago at the time of recording this. I had to give it a little bit of time to marinate because there were a lot of games that were mentioned there. And some of them were actually mentioned last year as well, which, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later. But these are my top seven games that were announced at that showcase. There's one major one that I left off the list. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are upset about that. So please don't cook me in the comments too hard. So the way that this is going to work is I'll give you my top seven games and we've got some honorable mentions that we'll throw in there. But let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. At number seven, we've got Flintlock Siege of Dawn. Honestly, the second that I saw the opening cinematic for this video game, I was immediately hooked. If you've never seen an Xbox showcase, they're not really spending too much time on every game. They kind of just run the cinematic. They got a little message on the bottom that says this is in-game footage or whatever the case might be. So this is one of those games where we don't necessarily have all the details. I don't know the full story, but what I do know is they're calling it a Souls-like. So looking at the combat that they showed us, it does have those Soul-like elements. But what I found the most surprising was that this reminds me a lot of the previous God of War games. So it's tough to say for sure, but just by looking at what they've revealed to us, the combat does look very similar. I found the combat and the movement to look similar, but they've included a lot of those old school guns in it as well to add sort of a different element to it, which I really, really like. It does seem like this game might be just a touch more open open world than those two previous God of War titles. But again, it is tough to say. The great thing about this game is though that it's coming out on July 18th of this year. So we'll be able to figure out all the details relatively quickly. Coming in at number six, we have Expedition 33. And what was different about this announcement was that they actually gave us a focus on the story and kind of built out this world to make it more intriguing right off the hop. So from what we were given, the whole premise around this game, which honestly I think could make like a great movie or anime or something if it isn't already. But sorry, let me rewind. So the premise of this game is that there is this female being who every year she wakes up and she paints a new number on a wall. Now the significance is that whatever number she paints on that wall kills everybody of that age on the planet. So think of Thanos doing his little snap that took away 50% of the world. In this case, she writes a number on the wall and everybody of that age just disappears. So this game's called Expedition 33 because she's painted the number 33 on the wall this year, which took out every 33 year old on the planet. And every year this civilization sends out a new expedition to attempt to kill her so that she can't wipe out an entire generation the following year. So not only does this game appear to have a really cool story, looking at the artwork, it looks fantastic. And then on top of that, it does have some really great combat. And although it was brief, looking at the combat of this game, it does seem to have those elements, but also mixed in potentially with action RPG. Either way, Expedition 33 looks extremely dope and it's absolutely a game that I would pick up on day one. Unfortunately, we don't have a specific release date for it. All we know is that it's dropping in 2025. Which brings me to our first honorable mention, Perfect Dark. If you're around my age group, you probably remember the original Perfect Dark dropping on N64 way back when. And based on what we know, it seems to be kind of a sci-fi action adventure thriller first person shooter. So there's a lot going on here. And when I was watching the preview, it did remind me a lot of Dishonored, but I already felt like the movements seem kind of janky and disjointed. Obviously this isn't gonna be the final version of the game. So maybe there's a little things that I was catching on that would be polished out by the end of it. But I wanted to throw this in as an honorable mention because I did really appreciate the original Perfect Dark. And from the couple shots that I did see here, it does seem like something that would be interesting. Although it wouldn't be a game that I picked up on day one. If you've made it this far, drop two black heart emojis down in the comments so I can thank you personally. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up so I know if I should keep making these in the future. Next, coming in at number five, we've got State of Decay 3. Now this one might rub people the wrong way. If you're not a fan of the State of Decay series, I honestly have really enjoyed it ever since State of Decay, the original. What I like about this is that yes, it is a zombie game, but it reminds me a lot of The Walking Dead where the game's not all about killing zombies. As a matter of fact, you're trying to avoid them most of the time because this is one of those games that is more about the human element. So you're focused on building up your stronghold. You're focused on trying to locate resources and find other survivors to add to your stronghold. I've always found the games to be very interesting, to be very fun and something that you can sink a ton of hours to because you kind of get to play it your way. Unfortunately, this is one of the ones that didn't show too much of the gameplay. They showed a lot of the cinematics, but then still mixed in gameplay elements to show you what the game is going to look like. They didn't really give you any overall expectations of the game. So a lot of this is just gonna be personal bias going off of the things that I enjoyed from State of Decay 1 and 2. 
too. But at the end of the day, based on the track record, I do see this as being a very good game and one that a lot of people are going to want to pick up. Unfortunately, they didn't give a specific release date for State of Decay 3, but my estimation is that it's going to be late 2025. Coming in at number four, we've got another Souls-like that I'm very excited about. This one is called Wu Chang Feathers. Now, this is definitely going to be one of those games like Dark Souls where you don't necessarily care about the story. I know there's a lot of people out there who do care about the lore of Dark Souls and Demon Souls, Bloodborne, etc., and actually read into all of that. But I think for the majority of us, we just enjoy the challenge of picking up the controller, figuring out the maps and all the puzzles, and then doing our best to beat down some massive monsters so for the majority of people that is what Wu Chang is going to be as far as I can tell you're the main protagonist who's playing sort of a fallen angel or demi-human so you've got a couple of those nice superpowers there but your main purpose is to track down and hunt monsters and demons so you can see a plethora of boss fights that have that standard bloodborne slash demon soul setup what I really like about this is the artwork looks fantastic the colors look just amazing and a lot of the shots here that they showed remind me more of bloodborne than anything else and that was honestly one of my favorite games and a lot of the shots here that they show remind me more so of bloodborne than anything else and that was definitely my favorite souls like to date so as with the majority of souls like games you can expect it to be very highly technical and a challenge that a lot of players will enjoy moving on to our next honorable mention this is an xbox staple and unfortunately it showed up last year on the xbox game showcase as well so we don't have enough information to actually put it into one of the top games so the fable preview showed us a very beautiful cutscene that i imagine is probably going to be like the opening scene for the game it did also show us just a touch of gameplay but not enough to make any real distinctions the fable games have been very good but also very disappointing at times so now going two years without really showing us anything gives me a little bit of concern so i can only hope that it's going to be a good game and i'm throwing it on the honorable mention list out of respect for the previous fable titles all right moving on to my number three which is going to make me sound like a bit of a hypocrite based on what i said about fable and that is avowed avowed was also mentioned in the 2023 game showcase and you probably noticed one of the cutscenes that they used this year was the same one that they used last year as well but they did provide us with a little bit more information with a little bit more gameplay i have this at number three because i'm a huge bethesda fan and there's a lot of people saying that this game is going to rival the elder scrolls series and they did show us a bunch of clips that are very reminiscent of those elder scrolls games so i'm putting a lot of stock in this here i really do believe in this game i do think that this game is going to live up to all of the hype that it has because they've taken so long to get it out it's been a long time since i I've been able to find a single player fantasy RPG that I've really been able to like fully sink my teeth into. And so I'm thinking that this is going to be the one. And again, we don't have a specific release date for this one, but we do know that it's expected to drop by the end of 2024. At number two, this one's got me excited, excited, bro. We've got the brand new Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater is actually a remake of Metal Gear Solid 3 from way back in 2004. And the reason why they chose to remake this one specifically is because it's actually the very first step in the entire Metal Gear Solid timeline. So whether you're a longtime MGS fan or this is going to be your first time jumping into the MGS series, this is going to be the perfect starting point. I don't think I really need to say too much about this one. There are very few people who don't understand how Metal Gear Solid games work, but in this one, your call sign is Silent Snake and you've been dropped into what looks like a sort of jungle kind of area and you're doing the things that Snake usually does. You're dropped into the jungle, you have nothing and you're pretty much stealthing your way, finding a bunch of items and just killing a ton of people on the way. And we're very fortunate because this is also expected to drop in 2024. Next up for the honorable mentions, and this one is also gonna get some people upset, is Assassin's Creed Shadows. This iteration of Assassin's Creed looks like it's set in feudal Japan and it gives you the opportunity to play two separate protagonists, the first of which is a very stealthy and agile ninja. So as you would expect, she's running across rooftops, jumping on people from above and doing all those crazy ninja-like things. And the second protagonist is a very hefty black samurai. This game really gives me Ghost of Tsushima vibes. I don't know if the combat is going to be as good, but the setting's fantastic. From what we see of the combat so far, it is pretty good. And lucky enough, it's coming out in November of this year. The next honorable mention is Doom. And while this game does look sick, like they showed us some pretty cool shots here, I really do think that the novelty of this is going to wear off relatively quickly for most people. Again, this could just be my personal bias, but there were other first person shooters announced. And while I would rank this well above Perfect Dark, it still feels like it's gonna be missing something. I'm honestly hoping that it's more than just a fan service and ends up being an actual
actual good game but at this point it's still tough to say so who really knows what we do know though is that doom is not dropping until sometime in 2025 and the last honorable mention before we jump into title number one is gears of war and again people might be upset about gears of war not making the overall list and the reason is because they really didn't show us anything all we got was a cinematic telling us that it's going to be basically chapter one of the gears of war series so they're fighting in the cities they're doing that whole house to house fighting thing but they don't tell us anything about the gameplay they don't tell us anything about what we can expect it was just a cinematic at this point so are the gears games generally very good yes they totally are but at this point we really don't have any info other than it's coming out i don't even think they gave us an expected date so for that reason it's been held off the list i wasn't even going to make it an honorable mention because there wasn't really much to mention but just so that i don't get cooked in the comments there it is so the number one game that was announced at the 2024 xbox game showcase it, it was an easy one like this is easily going to be the game that sells the most copies hands down it is black ops 6 you already knew so based on all the interviews that we were able to see treyarch and raven software went absolutely crazy with this iteration of black ops 6 i know call of duty games always get crazy amounts of hype and oftentimes we end up just buying the game because we're used to doing it and that's just what you do every year but i honestly do think that this is going to be the best call of duty game that's been dropped in a decade they've completely overhauled a ton of the systems in this game to make it way better there are some things that make me kind of nervous like a couple of things that they're showing that are making me feel like multiplayer is going to be a bit of a problem at least for a little bit but overall i'm super excited to play this game and test out all of those new things so for example they've completely revamped the movement system so you're able to sprint in any direction you're able to dive in any direction you can get those nice sideways max pain dives which that is one of the things that i think is going to mess multiplayer up so that remains to be seen but you're also able to go full prone and then turn your body completely over like the things that you're able to do in this game the things that they They've been showing off have just been incredible and whether you're someone that buys first person shooters for campaign mode or just straight multiplayer it looks like they've actually put some effort into the campaign to make it decent another thing that was announced is that they've brought back the prestige system that we know and love and apparently it goes up to like 1000 prestige and i mean i'm not in university anymore so i'll probably only get to like prestige 2 but the fact that they've made a thousand of them is absolutely insane and i'm excited to see all the crazy twitch streamers that are able to hit that and if neither of those two things excite you one thing that absolutely should is the return of turn-based zombies that's easily one of the things that i'm the most excited for is the return of the zombies that we know and love and just seeing all the crazy wacky things that they intend to put into this new rendition of zombies like this is why i feel like this is going to be the best call of duty in forever because they're actually listening to what people want regardless a ton of games were announced and i'm genuinely interested in knowing what your favorite games are so leave a message down below and let me know what game you've been looking forward to the most but that's pretty much it from me much love as always, throwing up two of them, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.